What's up, everybody? This is James White with Freak Interviews, bringing you gadget reviews, product comparisons, and more. Now, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. Now, today I've got some travel related items that I brought here to Hawaii with me. Some of them I've had for a long time, some I've never even used before. So, let's crack them open and check it out. All right, guys, here I am in Hawaii with my touristy Hawaii shirt. That's right, I'm a tourist, and I can wear a touristy shirt here because I live in a tourist area back in Las Vegas. I don't wear Las Vegas shirts there, but I can wear a Hawaii shirt in Hawaii because I'm a tourist and proud of it. Anyways, I digress. I'll be honest, I really didn't have much of a plan for this video. I knew I was going to be in Hawaii. I knew I wanted to film something here, but that's about as far as it went. So I just kind of compiled like a group of things that I've traveled with in the past and also several things that I, I bought on Amazon to, that looked interesting. So uh, let me reach into my grab bag of goodies and see the first thing that I pull out and I'll do that first. Here you go. What do you got here first? Oh good. This is the ATEC 7-in-1 multifunction tool pin. I figured a gadget like this might be handy on the road because it has so many different things that it does. Let's see what the features are. It has a 0.7 millimeter ballpoint pin. I would hope it would have a pin. A stylus, bottle opener, Phillips screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, a three inch ruler, a phone stand. But let me cut in right here and get rid of the rest of the video I was gonna show you because I was going to show you an overview of the pen but I hadn't used it yet so early I didn't know what I was doing. Now I've been using it for several days. I have a little bit better feel for it. So here's how this pen works. It's almost like a magic trick because sometimes you take it off and you get this. And then other ways you take it off you get this, and then here's the stylus, but you gotta take this off to get to the somewhat ineffective screwdrivers. Here's the flathead. Here's the Phillips. These are, are quite weak screwdrivers. I wouldn't really expect to unscrew anything significant with these. Maybe it's not good for heavy duty jobs here. Uh, no, that's not turning. And you might get ink on your fingers when you're using the screwdriver because I'm holding on this end. So yeah, I'm turning, it's making the pen come out sometimes and get ink on my fingers. The stylus works pretty well as a stylus. The pen is an average pen. That's heavy. This thing, you can like, you can like curl it. It's very heavy. July 2019 in the house. It's a pen. It works, it works like a pen. If you want refills, I'm not sure if you can get refills for this. I, I couldn't really tell for the Amazon page. The ruler portion, it's it's okay. I mean, it's it's only three inches. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be using that too much. And I don't think the phone stand is really that great. I was looking on the Amazon page and they have it being used as a phone stand two different ways. I only used it one when I first tried it out. In fact, I'll show you when I first tried it out right here. Oh, I, I, guess it, I, I guess that works. I mean, it's, it doesn't feel real sturdy. 10S Max, I guess the case does fit, but it's, you need somewhat of an angle there. Hmm. I don't know. I think the phone stand is, is functional. I still kind of like the one I just reviewed right here. It fits in my wall. I use this in the plane. It really worked well on the way, all the way here. See, that's, that's pretty nice. It's more compact. It fits in your wallet. I would summarize this pen the way one Amazon reviewer did. That person did it, summed up pretty nicely. That's it. It's a jack of all trades, a master of none. It does a lot of things, but doesn't do any of them really that well, except for working as a pen. But for 15 bucks, it should do a lot more than that. All right, let's see what's next in the goodie bag here stuff. Oh, okay, good. These are UV sun meter cards. Let me take these inside and give you a better idea of what they're like. What you're supposed to do with this is you hold it in the sun for 10 seconds and it tells you how strong the UV intensity is and it tells you what sunscreen to apply. So when this changes color, you turn the card over and it tells you the intensity and what kind of uh, sunscreen you should be looking at. The top row here is for your, your skin color. So what you're supposed to do is line up your skin color with what color it reads and that's, that's how much protection you should use in the sun. So in other words, with my light skin, if I see that, I should basically just cash in my chips and be done because they don't even have they don't even have a scale for how much protection I need. I should basically just stay inside. All right, it says to hold this card in the direct sunlight for 10 seconds and then compare it on the chart on the bottom. Oh, it's turning purple. Low, medium, high, and very high. I would say that's high. 
On the back of the card it says I need to cover my body, wear eye protection, and wear a cap. I could be in, I could be in trouble. Good thing I have one of my UV cards to tell me what I should wear. Now in very small letters it tells you the SPF you should apply depending on what the UV is. And this one says 45. If I go home burnt then this card didn't work. But if I go home not burnt I'll give it credit. So I'm following what this card says the rest of my time here in Hawaii. All right, let's take a quick demonstration of this card here. I'm gonna put it in the sunlight for 10 seconds. Oh, it's changing colors already. Look how fast, not even 10 seconds. Depending on your skin color, looks like glasses, body covering, and hat for me today. Well, now I know, thanks to my fancy UV card. I spent a lot of time at the beach this trip, and I did try my UV cards, and I still got burnt. It's funny, I live in Las Vegas where the sun is brutal sometimes. I never get burnt there. I've gotten burnt twice this year at the beach, once in Florida, once in Hawaii. And even though I have my UV card to tell me that the UV index was pretty high, I still got burnt. My problem is that I wasn't reapplying sunscreen often enough. Rookie mistake, I know. It's a good aid. It's certainly not a solution in itself. Grab bag time. Let's see what's in here. This one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use on the plane, but I can actually... Uh... Oh, that's so obnoxious. This... Why is it so noisy here? Anyways. This is actually, it's something I've actually got a lot of requests for, which is a, like inflatable travel pillows. This is one that looked like it was popular online, looked kind of interesting. I brought it here without using it. I figured I would inflate it here and see how well it packs back into this bag and then try it on the airplane on the way back home. Let me go inside and see how this inflates. Nice bag. By the way, I'll link all the products here in the description below if you're interested in them. Oh, it comes with a, an eye mask. I wasn't expecting that. Double prizes here. They've got some non-written instructions. That's kind of useful, I guess. So my question is, how long does it take to inflate? How easy is it to inflate? And how well can I pack it back into that bag for future use? They're saying you just gotta blow it up in here. Blow it up? I'll be honest, I don't really like the, t the feel of this. This is like a velvet. It kind of makes my skin crawl a little bit. All right, here we go. All right, so that was about five breaths that took me to blow that up. That's not, that really isn't that bad, to be honest. Oh, I don't like that material. Oh, I don't like that. You're supposed to place this on the uh, tray in front. I'll do this on the plane on the way home. Have your hands rest in there and your face like that. It kind of has a smell to it as well. I might air this out on the balcony before I leave. I'm glad I opened it up here because, yeah, I, I couldn't really handle breathing that all day long. All right, so let me deflate this. Push this button to deflate it. I just don't remember how it was folded. What are the chances that I actually get this back in this bag? Because you know they probably have some machine that stuffs it in there and there's no way you're gonna get it. Ugh. Ugh. Let's see. I think I'm doing it. Just kind of shoving it in there. All right. Perfect. What do you think about this, huh? It's great. That's as good as I can do. Anyways, I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna air it out on the balcony until I leave because it stinks. We'll get back to this one on the airplane. All right, the next item I have is not something that I just bought. In fact, I've had this for two years now. And that is this Logitech Bluetooth keyboard, which I do not travel without this keyboard. Because what I used to do is when I would travel, I would have my laptop. And I have a large, I have, my laptop has a 17-inch screen. So it's a, it's a large laptop. When you fire that thing up on, in an airplane, you got people right next to you. It's just, it's just too much. A lot of times, all I want to do is type text anyways. So uh, I decided to start typing into my phone using a Bluetooth keyboard. The other thing about the Bluetooth keyboard is you can, just, you can power three different devices. Like I have two phones and I have a tablet, so I can go back and forth between all three of them. I actually ended up buying a second one of these for my daughter because she types into her tablet as well. So if you ever like to type into your phone, in fact, when I'm texting, if, if those friends of mine out there who I'm texting, I don't text on my phone with the thumb. I text with this. This is how I text. I'm old school. I like to type into a keyboard. This is a full-size keyboard. Doesn't have 10 key, but that's a trade-off. Everything else about it is pretty awesome. The other thing about this one is it takes uh, only two AAA batteries, and they last probably close to a year. It, they last a long time. So the battery light, it doesn't chew through batteries. In fact, I use rechargeables, and so I pretty much never have to worry about it. How about uh, another throwback? This is, a, this is my number one item of 2017, and that was a Thin Optics. These are the reading glasses. It goes on the back of your phone. This is a travel essential if you wear reading glasses. If you don't wear reading glasses, then you're probably thinking, why is this old guy trying to push these reading glasses on me? Having this attached to the back of your phone is much better than having to fish in your bag for some old reading glasses or in your pockets and get scratched up. 
Here they stay safe in their case. I will say that uh, about a year after I got these, the original ones broke and they had a lifetime warranty. They sent me a new pair. So this is actually my second pair in the original case. So thin optics, even though it's been around for a while, this is still one of my favorite travel items to use. And my last travel item is this one, which is a travel blanket. Now there's nothing really special about this. There's a million travel blankets, but this one, it seems like it, it condenses down to a pretty small area and it looked pretty soft from the photos. So I thought I would give this one a try. This one is gonna go on the airplane, but I wanna open it up and make sure it doesn't stink like this travel pillow with, with the horrible velvety feeling that I made, makes my skin crawl. I also wanna see if this will fit back in the bag once I've taken it out, because that's important. Why well, have a nice, nice fancy travel bag if you can use it once and then never get it back in the bag again oh yeah the the inside has a nice nice lining too i could probably use that as a blanket no just kidding all right let's see how big this opens up to oh it's like a full-size blanket oh yeah i don't know if i can give you an idea of how big this thing is ah, there we go the material feels nice unlike that pillow and it feels pretty heavy and warm it doesn't really smell bad i might let it air out just in case by the way, my plane flight on the way here was absolutely freezing, so this might come in handy as I have a tandem of these two items. We'll see. Sitting here on the balcony overlooking Waikiki Beach, the idea of a blanket doesn't sound so appealing right now. This segment of this video is over. I gotta hop on a plane and head back to Vegas. A nice warm desert heat and wrap this thing up. See you guys back on the other side of the ocean. flying over uh, Pacific Ocean. Getting kind of tired, so I'm gonna pull out my face pillow and see how it works. Now I'm supposed to be able to put my face and hands in here and go to sleep. But first, how about my travel blanket while I'm at it? Because it's always kind of chilly in here on the airplane. Voila. Man, it's gonna be like first class in here, huh? All right, land in Vegas in a couple hours. I'll be warm and comfortable. Good night, guys. Whoa, this is kind of weird. It's kind of comfortable, I guess. I mean, it's better than putting your head nowhere. Is this, is this as creepy looking to you guys as it is to me? Because I'm looking at the camera and it's pretty creepy looking. I don't know if I could sleep like this because my back's kind of hunched over, but I guess it's comfortable. Well, I'm gonna turn the lights off now and actually see if I can actually sleep in this thing. I have my warm blanket, I got my face pillow. I'm good to go. Good night, guys. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes, and uh, I, I, one thing I noticed that it, I feel very carbon dioxide-ish in here. Like, I don't feel like I'm breathing a lot of fresh air because my hands are kind of blocking the entrance. So if you're claustrophobic like that, you may not like this. I'm not really a fan of the uh, of breathing your all your exhaled air. Some people like it, some people won't. I'm, I'm still on the fence. So here's an example of how I've traveled with multiple items I reviewed in the past. Start off with my thin optics of reading glasses. I've got my new blanket here. My Bluetooth keyboard. My wallet phone stand. And I can actually type into my phone. Don't need my, to pull my laptop out of there, so. So some of these gadgets actually come in handy, what do you know? I'm gonna go back home and wrap up this review of all these products and see how they all kind of stand. That's next. All right, I'm back here in scorching hot Las Vegas. No panoramic ocean view, no sound of the waves in the distance, no clean salty air. But I wanted to tie up a few loose ends on this video and uh, wrap this thing up. So for the pen, I wanted to show the second configuration for the phone stand and also show you how it works as a bottle opener. And... Perfect. It's kind of par for the course of the pin. It works as a bottle opener, but not as well as a regular bottle opener. It works as a screwdriver, but not as well as a screwdriver, and so on. Now the second phone configuration, I didn't even see on the packaging yet. I just saw on the Amazon page after the fact. So let me try that real quick. It's so, it's so easy. It's so efficient. Oh, there we go. Okay, look how perfect that was. Now is it gonna fall down easily? Yes, it will. Uh, I'm gonna say the second phone configuration is not even as good as the first, which is like this.
yeah, I'm gonna say, eh. So to wrap up the pen, I think that the results speak for themselves. I don't even really need to say much more about it. Now for the UV card, I wanted to do a quick test in the Vegas sun and see how that looks. Let's do that real quick. Oh, it's turning purple. It's, it's, I'd say it's pretty high. So it's not too much different than Hawaii. I'm actually a little bit surprised. I thought it would be higher than that. Of course, it is only 1030 in the morning, so maybe this afternoon it might even be worse. But it's actually a little bit closer to Hawaii than I thought it would be. I'm not sure these really offer a huge advantage. It just seems like, yeah, you know if the UV rays are strong, but you should be pretty much prepared for it to be bad anyways when you're going out in the sun, because if you don't, you're going to get burnt, like I did. And I was prepared for it. I think that it's a good idea, and I think that it works. I just don't know how useful it really is. Now, real quick on the two, the travel pillow and the blanket. I do want to mention that putting these back in their containers on the plane was not easy, especially when you have someone sitting next to you, you're kind of in a cramped seat. Here's how I was able to do it on the plane while cramped. So you can see that it's, it, it got halfway in and I just kind of ran out of room. And on the blanket, I got it mostly in there but I didn't get it zipped up because it's like too thick or something. I'm, I'm not sure why I couldn't get it zipped completely. This was actually kind of hard to fold on the plane. I mean, you're sitting there trying to fold this large blanket in this little seat. It wasn't that easy, but I did it. Now, as far as how effective they are, I mean, this is a typical travel blanket. There's nothing special about it, but I did like that it folded into a pretty compact bag. I actually put it in my backpack, but if you're short on space, you could probably loop this over something and kind of hang it off. Uh, it's very warm. It worked well on the plane. I typically travel places that are tropical, so I don't need it anywhere except for the plane, but it's actually pretty inexpensive and not a bad travel blanket. Now, as far as the pillow goes, not a fan of the material. I did like the fact that it was easy to blow up, only five or six puffs to do that. But after I aired out in Hawaii, it was pretty easy to get back in there to go on the plane. It's just on the plane itself, it was hard to really pack back in the bag. The biggest thing to me actually was that I felt kind of claustrophobic being in there with a little airflow. I don't know if I could get comfortable enough to fall asleep with my face in there knowing that I was going to have such a little airflow. So it's not for everybody, but there are people out there who really swear by these and I can understand why because sometimes you just want to put your head forward and go to sleep on a plane. This makes that easier. If you're not claustrophobic and you don't mind the material of this one. So that's all I've got guys. I'm back home in Vegas and actually heading on another road trip pretty soon. So stay tuned for a road trip travel gadget. In a coming episode. Have you guys tried any of these products? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Please follow my social profiles for progress pictures, videos as I go, and please subscribe for more product reviews from me, James White, with Freaking Reviews.